Hello, and welcome back to the video series, New Mindsets for Game-Changing Results in Project Management. For today, we're looking at mindset myth number two, an idle resource is waste. And let's take a look at the new mindset. The new mindset, let's rephrase idle with protective capacity. And protective capacity is the ability to sprint and absorb system variability. And if we look at an example, let's consider that we've got a house fire that just started and we've called the fire department and we're looking to get the firefighters out there to eliminate the fire and minimize the amount of damage spread to the other areas of the home. Do we want the firefighters idle and ready to respond to the call immediately? Or would we prefer for them to be fighting another fire elsewhere? Obviously, the answer is we want them ready to go, ready to respond to our call. And if they are ready to respond to our call, they can get out immediately and put out the fire and minimize any further damage. Looking at another example, mm -hmm. let's consider the highway system and the amount of cars utilizing the resource of the highway. In this example, we see that there's a lot of idle resource space, a lot of space on the highway. When we have this idle space, we can have high flow of value being delivered through the system. If we work to eliminate this idle resource, we end up with gridlock, something that nobody wants. And when this happens on projects, our projects move extremely slowly through the system and it diminishes our return on investment because when we start a project, we start spending money. And when we finish a project, we begin making money or, or realizing the benefits that we set out to achieve. We want to have the goal of high value delivery through the system in a project environment. And if we look at another example that's more closely uh, related to a project environment, let's consider a doctor's office. The goal of the doctor's office is to maximize the patient-centered, high-quality flow of care. And in doing so, there's a lot of resources that work towards this goal. We've got the receptionist, the waiting room, the nurse, and the doctor. And the doctor is strategically the capacity-constrained resource, the resource with the most amount of work and the least amount of capacity. If we have the receptionist ready to check in patients as they arrive, we have a better user experience and we optimize the flow of work through the system. And a doctor's office can be more closely um, similar to a project environment that we might face in our, in our environments. If we work to minimize the amount of idle time for the receptionist, we end up with long queues and this will impact the overall system performance of the doctor's office as a, as a whole. And if we look at the resource of the waiting room, we've got a lot of unused resources here in that we've got chairs available in the waiting room. If we look to eliminate this idle resource, we end up with a waiting room full of people in close proximity, probably facing a user experience that is not very pleasant and we deteriorate the overall performance of the system as a whole. And similarly, if we look at reducing the, the, the availability and the idleness of uh, the nurse taking the blood pressure and the temperature and the weight, we also will deteriorate the system performance. Doctors are already uh, under pressure uh, by being the strategically selected capacity constrained resource. They've got the most amount of work and the least amount of capacity. The entire, the other resources in the system must work to help the doctor to achieve the goal of high quality patient care and high flow through the system. If we focus on getting the non-constraints, the receptionist, the waiting room, and the nurse, close to 100% utilization, what does that do for the capacity constrained resources, the doctor? The answer is we overwhelm the doctors even more and deteriorate the system goal. 
In order to maximize system performance, most subsystems must be suboptimized. They must have protective capacity. And by having protective capacity, they have some idle time to respond to the system variability and to sprint, which will help protect the performance of the system as a whole. In the project space, we can see that we have also a capacity constrained resource on, in most projects. The first step is to identify where is that capacity constrained resource or where should it be? And then help align all of the other resources to protect the capacity constrained resource to help maximize the flow of value within the system. And you can see that here with this illustration. And to cap this off, let's look at the humor of Dr. Deming uh, as he was talking about the inefficiency of an orchestra. He says, it doesn't make any sense. They are very inefficient. They've got people with instruments in their hands just sitting there doing nothing, not playing at all. They ought to be playing, doing nothing. Can you imagine such inefficiency? And some of them don't play loud. They soften down. They should be playing louder. The only one that works all the time, all the way through, is the conductor. Some of the others take rest in between. Take life easy. The conductor works like a dog all of the way through. Very inefficient an orchestra is. Let's consider in our project environments where we've got resources that should, should, be, should be supporting the capacity constrained resource in order to achieve our goal of high flow of value through the system. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. Please uh, like, comment, and follow, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.